I recently released a video showing my full process for how I print FDM minis on my stock printer, with no upgrades or replaced parts, as well as another video showing how I paint some of those minis. And you all left some incredible comments, from people that were super excited to see how far FDM has come, to some people that had incredible tips and tricks on how to improve my prints further, and some other people who had some very, uh, strong opinions. But the two most common comments by far on those videos are people requesting for me to try a 0.2mm nozzle and to give Orca Slicer a go instead of Prusa. And damn, you guys were right. I've got some stuff I want to cover and some really important information if you're going to try this for yourself that you're going to want to know so you don't muck up your printer like I kind of did. But before we get into that, let's just straight up take a look at a few of these prints because they are awesome. These are awesome. You have no idea how amazed I was at the difference a 0.2mm nozzle actually made. Bear in mind, this was my first test print with the new nozzle. I was fully expecting to have to do several versions of this before I started to get even remotely good looking prints, but this was damn near perfect right out of the box. And the detail compared to my 0.4mm nozzle prints from Prusa Slicer, it's night and day. If you ignore some of the very minor scarring and loss of detail on huge overhangs, you'd almost be forgiven for thinking this was a resin model from about a foot away. Usually I have to throw a coat of primer on my FDM minis to fill in some of the layer lines before it starts looking okay, but here I really don't see many. When it came to cleanup and assembly for these minis, it really wasn't that much more painful than a traditional model kit. First and foremost, support removal was really easy. I used Orca's thin tree supports with two shells, to give supports that would be strong enough to survive printing but still thin enough that they peel off without too much force. And due to the thin nozzle, and therefore weaker interface on the top of supports, a Z top distance of about 2 layers, or 0.16mm in this case, was really nice and close to avoid blobs on supported areas but still really easy to remove. Then I just had to clean up a few areas to make sure that the pieces fit together seamlessly, and I scraped away a few of the worst looking overhang blobs and scarring left by support material. There was a small area where the cloak seemed to intersect with the legs. The torso had a nice indent for the cloak, so I'm not sure if this is my fault or simply just a model error, but I'll go over later why this could have possibly been my fault. A few drops of super glue later, and we have a fully built model that, to be honest, I would be super happy using this as a hero mini, even among resin or plastic miniature armies. I did have a few issues when printing this marine. The nozzle did clog a few times. It seems like a nozzle that thin, even a small speck of dust is gonna clog it during a print. So I fixed this by taping a piece of spongy foam, just some packing material, over the extruder intake on the printer, just to wipe away any dust as the filament's going through the machine. And after I'd done that I didn't have any more clogging problems. One thing I will say right now, if you're planning on trying Orca Slicer for yourself, the first time you get the program open and set up, uncheck this damn tick box. This will stop Orca Slicer from overriding your printer's default acceleration and speed settings. Very important. So go ahead, open your printer settings here, then head to Motion Abilities and turn off Emit Limits to G-Code. I also went ahead and changed the limitations in here, just so that my prints weren't printing super slow. Now, with the success of this marine, I really needed to make sure that this wasn't just a one-time fluke, so I ran off and printed a few more models. Firstly, a smaller D&D scale orc, who I may have scaled down a little bit too much, a supportless Mephit model, also scaled for D&D, and finally, a Makua Marine from the Space Bears range, to directly compare to my previous 0.4mm nozzle Space Bear print. This is where I ran into my first major user error. Totally my bad, but definitely something worth noting. In an effort to reduce ugly overhangs, I turned on Make Overhangs Printable in the slicer. What this does is gradually builds up to overhangs. This worked great on the Orc and the Mephit, because they're more or less single piece prints. Even though the Orc is two pieces, its connection point wasn't altered by this setting. However, the Space Bear has these large shoulder pads with a socket to glue the arms into. By enabling Make Overhands Printable, this added a 45 degree slope to these areas to make them able to print without support material. And in doing so, it made the socket completely inaccessible for the arms. This is a great setting if you're printing single piece minis and want to eliminate a few supports, but is definitely something to watch out for when printing multi-part models. 
I'm still not sure if this is the same reason that I had issues with the cloak not quite fitting onto the model on that first marine. I don't see any reason why this should have altered the geometry of those areas, so I'm willing to say that it's probably a model error, but not 100% sure. Either way, if you're printing multi-part minis, I would just recommend turning this off for those prints. It edits the geometry in a way that makes those overhangs printable, but it is going to compromise those connection points. Other than that, <laughs> these minis are bloody awesome. Comparing these to some of the 0.4mm nozzle prints that are done in Prusa Slicer, man, the quality difference is night and day. And with an only 25-ish percent increase in print time, I do not think that there is a reason that I would go back to using a 0.4mm nozzle for faster minis. I just wanted to make this video to showcase that I really do think that any modern FDM printer is going to be fully capable of printing minis like these. A 0.2mm nozzle and finding the right slicer is going to have your hobby level printer punching well above its weight class in terms of detail in no time. But I also really just wanted to make this video to say thank you for all of the kind words and the incredible tips and tricks that everyone left on those previous videos. If it wasn't for your encouragement on those, I never would have thought to try a 0.2mm nozzle or swapping slices would make this much of a difference. It was your guys' knowledge that led me down this rabbit hole to vastly improving my FDM print quality and I'm really excited to keep looking at this and keep digging, making more content for you guys in the future. There's a couple of follow-up videos that I want to do, maybe painting up a few of the minis that we saw in this video, and another full guide on my updated process for printing FDM minis. But there's still a little bit more experimentation that I want to do before I put the time into that video. I also have a video in the works looking at a few different resin miniatures, so maybe we can have a look and compare the FDM while we're there. Please do consider subscribing if any of those future videos sound like they might be of interest to you. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a good one.